Are you the children? Hello? Hello? Ready? No, I'm talking to your children. <laughs> yes, they all, they all want to be in the movie. Hey. over on this side and give me your good side. What is the mission for the House of Aviance? Okay. The mission of the House of Aviance, when I was asked to be in the House, um, I was one of the first, I guess, five or six members that were in the beginning of the House in Washington, D.C. And um, we were given the name, and the name was supposed to help us follow our dreams. Um, <laughs> What's your dream? What was your dream? My dream? At that time, it was just to be, I guess, I was such a loud queen. I was really loud at the time, so, I mean, this is not loud compared to what I used to be like. I mean, it's a little organized now, but like before, I used to be really extremely loud, like very bush queen up in drag without the tits and like the, but with the illusions of the, of the drama, like, you know. Very ebony fashion fair makeup and <laughs> and like hair down to the middle of my ass and <laughs> a lot of nails and I was really going through it, going through it. But it was cute though, it was really cute. Um, I I started performing in D.C. at um, a nightclub called Trax and um, there used to be a night called Thursday Night. Thursday Night was like an alternative night, so it's like kind of like alternative music, um, very mixed crowd. Um, by then, it was the kids were just like, you know, they were all experimenting with like bisexuality and all that stuff. So it was really kind of cool to be like part of this whole like young, even though I wasn't as young as those kids were then, I was, it was still, I was still young to the scene then. And um, it was uh, crazy, crazy, crazy time. Fun. <laughs> Creativity of the ballroom of the ball community. Why are there so many creative children ending up in the ball scene? I mean, come on, face it. The creativity within the black and the Latin community. Period. It just this happens to you when you're when you're when you're a little child. I mean, we're, you're you in the black community. We we dress up to go to church and church. Getting dressed up just to go to church is just an event, you know. And and uh, um, getting dressed up. Period. is an event. So. Um, you know, with all our cultures and everything, it just, you know, it's, of course, like, I can see where all the people, where, where all the creativity comes out, because that's where you can show it, and no one's telling you you can't do it, and no one's telling you that you're not fierce, they're just chopping you, but, you know, you could be amazingly, incredibly over, and just having that trophy or that recognition for that is enough for some of those people, some of the people, are, it's just, like, enough, and to be honest with you, um, I respect them so much for that, just being so comfortable with that, you know? How important is the trophy and grand prize to you? To me? Yeah. Um, the first ball I ever walked in was an extravaganza ball back in, I don't know when, but it was long ago. And uh, 
I remember the first time I met uh, William and um, they used to do runway. The runway was really like the new, it was like the new thing. And the girls were doing finger waves and, uh, you know, Mugler suits and uh, Claw Montana and I was gagging. I remember me and Robert, Robert who's Robert Mugler now, he was Robert Avians at the time, and uh, <laughs> we walked out and we did <laughs> Girl, I had never been so chopped in my whole life. I'll never forget that moment in my life. They said, I, Linda Blair, Linda Blair, Linda Blair, someone let these Clyde sales out. Giddy up, girl. It was really, really bad. And at the time, I didn't really know the lingo, so I didn't know what it meant, what they were saying. But we kept walking down the runway anyway. The kids were cackling because we didn't stop runway. We just kept runway and runway back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And they were like, chop, 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 chop. And I was just like, oh, I guess they don't like this. So. And I never walked the ball ever again. And never again after that. Until Cunty was released. And I went to a ball and um, they were doing a uh, film cunt competition. And was it film cunt or film, film wave vogue? Or, I think it was film cunt. And, or femme, my femme body was femme body. And I gagged, I gagged, because the girls did the record and they had a little movement to it. And, you know, Cunty was not, um, I mean, it was made because of that, re it was made because of a feeling, you know? And I really wasn't a peer queen at the time. So, you know, I did go to Sound Factory, I was a Sound Factory queen. And I didn't really hang out at the peer because I didn't know of, about the peer being so, powerful down there so I did I went a couple of times but I really didn't understand what was going on um, with the pier and what, what that actually meant but I loved going down there I just I just you know I kept my it was respectful I just kept it cute you know. You used to hang out at the pier? Did I used to hang out at the pier? I used to go every now and then I mean with Kunti it was so Kunti was such a record that it was like you know I just saw the kids doing runway. They had boom boxes and they were doing runway up and down. And I remember when the drag queen used to perform down there. She had, she was doing country. She was performing my record. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. You know, you have to understand something. Like, I am really engulfed inside the popular gay community. And to be with the, uh, with my brothers and sisters and seeing them, you know, that that was my that was my tens. You know what I mean? That's my rewards. You know, that's that's everything to me because. You know, when it all when it all said and done, I am a black queen, period, point blank, you know, and I come from a very southern black world, you know, and um, when, uh, when you see other kids, especially the black kids, um, you see yourself, you know, and, and I see myself and all those kids, you know, the way they're walking, the way they're like, and, and the cocoa butter and all the, 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 the sneakers and, and, the, and the, 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 the haircuts and everything. I think it's, it's amazing. It's so beautiful to me. How do you feel that your music is somewhat ballroom classics? I mean, that's really what it's an is. honor. It's a total honor. It's a total honor to be a ballroom classic. To be, to, well, you know, they don't really have a competition for best song. I don't know if they've ever had a competition for best song, but I guess it's, I guess it's like, you know, you know, well, you know, doing Dindada, that song was, so, I mean, okay, they were let, when they asked me to do another song, I said, well, we need to do a cover, let's do Dindada. They laughed at me at the record, they said, you've got to be kidding, you're not going to do Dindada. There's no way, we can't, there's no possible way you're going to do a classic like that. And I said, well, why not? They said, well, how are you going mean, to, that song is like, I said, I lip sync it almost every time of my show, I lip sync it all over the world, you know, I used to do a lot of lip syncing, so. They said, really? I said, yeah, I can do it live. And I did it right there in the record label. They were like, oh, okay, well, well, let's try it. And then um, I worked with one producer, and then I worked with um, Gomi. And Gomi was the one who really got it out of me. And uh, I gagged, because the kids had a dance to it. And it's kind of like, the, I guess it's called New Way now, the New Way Vogue. Or, and back then, it was really new. And the kids were very like, you know, ballet vogue, or, just call it, or yoga vogue, they should call it, or very pop dip stretch vogue. And, you know, that's the vogue I love to death. But now that's old way, so, I feel, so legally I am an old queen. But anyway, um, that's not cute. So, <laughs> but to see these kids do this, 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 this,
and it was mostly like the black kids doing it. So that, to me, was giving them more of this like power because they really had it. Those black kids were the ones that could really like, and they were really young, so they were like, bah, bah, like throwing their bodies. I was like, oh my god, they gotta stop doing this. They have to stop doing this. This is not nice. This is not. This is not the right. And then finally, it just it just took hold, and those kids are like. They're, they're geniuses, because they advanced Vogue, you know what I mean? And I, can see, I can't wait to see where Vogue is going to go after that, you know? And I love it that they, people are doing it again. People are, they are wanting it again. They are feeling it again. I mean, face it, it's the true gay dance, period, point, blank. There's flagging, and then there's voguing. I'd rather be voguing. And, um, I mean, fagging, flagging is kind of like the Fire Island Vogue, I guess you could say, is that what it is? But... You know, it's all it's all relevant to each other. You know, I mean, there are girls, you know, going to, to dance with ballet companies now, and from New York City now, the young kids are, and you know, they are really taking Vogue seriously, and I'm so happy for that because to be able to say you are Vogue is someone that does rehearse every day and it does go out there to the floor and practice and practice and practice, and we are in comp constant competition, and they. It's a beautiful thing. It's really a beautiful, beautiful dance. It's one of the most beautiful dances I've ever seen in my life. How did your music empower you um, artistically and socially? Um, where I used to be a freak in a sense of what is this child going through, you know, and the music helped to get my message across of who I am and what I'm about. So people, so, you know, music seems to be a, a soother for a lot of people. It soothes the beast, you know what I mean? And me being a beast sometimes, <laughs> it kind of soothes people when they come sometimes see me or they see my music or hear my music and stuff. They, they can relate to it a lot better sometimes just than just seeing me. It's, I mean, just dressing up is just it's more of a, when you're dressing up, it's just, you know, face it, it's, 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 it's like the, uh, the icing on the cake, you know what I mean? So sometimes my icing is a little rough. It was kind of abrupt or, you know, um, too glossy, too pretty, too, too off the beat or whatever the case may be. But um, the music and people all seem to relate to the music. Um, is there anything you can talk about socially, how it advanced you in higher circles? Oh, of course. Of course it advanced me in circles. I mean, come on, face it. I mean, you know, when you're putting all the magazines and you have your agents and you are, you know, asked to come to fashion shows and you travel around the world, of course. I mean, you have to, you have to come correct. You have to act a certain way and be a certain way. And uh, sometimes I'm a little crazy and I just act the way I want to act. And, I had paid for those, for those um, acting kind of like, I should say, um, crafts. But, um, you know, but that's, you know, you can, people, you know, living in New York, it's just such a, it's, this place is so fierce, you have no idea. I mean, you, it's, it's so fierce. You can be at the opera and somebody next to you is in a sweatsuit. And then, you know, the lady next to you is in a ballroom gown and, you know, they're in their own ball, you know what I mean? Their own, like, runaway show, their own competition. So, you know, New York is one big ball that's constantly going on and on every day. She starts when the sun goes up and she ends when the sun goes back up again. So usually every day is like a ball, you know? How did your parents relate to you and how did you come out to them? Well, I came out of my mother when I was, I don't understand, <laughs> June 22nd, 1968. I came from a big family, uh, Richard, Virginia, eight kids. And um, my mom and dad basically came to see my show for the first time about three or four years ago. And uh, my mom just sat there and was like, she was like, what do you think, mom? She's like, dude, what are you doing different? And I said, what do you mean? You've been doing that since you were a kid. I said, okay, okay, fine. My dad, on the other hand, was a little rough on me. Um, he didn't understand what was going on too much, but he's fine now. So, you know, you can fight your parents all you want to, and you can not listen to them, and you might not agree with what they say sometimes, but I will tell you one thing. I had to finally call my mom and dad up and say, I'm sorry. And I said, I'm sorry for not listening. I'm sorry for not, for not, um, for not uh, really listening to what you had to say to me. Because you were right. It was hard. It was very hard, and it still is hard. And, and um, I took a really different path than what they wanted me to. And I'm not 
regretting any of it. But um, I think if I had like um, include the men a little bit more, um, instead of trying to be such an outcast, trying to be such a, you know, I was very very blessed. You know, I came from Virginia. I grew up in a, you know, I was one of. You know, the high school was, was fantastic, the labor group was fantastic. My family's still together, they still meet for holidays. I mean, I grew up in a very fortunate family and, and, and everything I wanted I got, you know, and then wanted I got. And, you know, I, I'm very blessed for being able to, I went to concerts, I went to, every, I did everything I wanted. I mean, everything, it was crazy stuff, crazy, crazy stuff. And, you know, to have eight kids that also did the same thing too. And my, my mom and dad, my, especially my mom, she is the... You know, I really didn't realize how much this woman meant to me. I almost lost her last year, and um, she's doing fine now. She's cured from cancer. And uh, I just, when, I th when this woman was actually, when I thought this woman was going to leave my life, everything you see is my mother, you know what I mean? I learned all this stuff from my mom, so it's like, you know, little, I mean, she didn't do this in church or anything like that, but it was like, you know, just the, her mannerisms and the way she acted, and, and she was a, such a strong, strong person, strong person. She is a strong person, you know. <sighs> June 26th is your birthday? June 26th, you yeah. Yeah, are you cancer? Where? What's your birthday? June 21st. Oh, you're a gym though. Well, yeah, I see what I can, yeah. yeah. The 21st, 21st is a weird day. What inspired you to walk balls? What inspired me to walk balls? Yeah. Um, the next ball that I did walk, it was a couple little balls we walked in. Um, the house was getting a little stronger and, um, in New York. And finally, I was not walking until we had a fierce training. And that was just period point blank. And then the last latex ball we did, which I think is what they're going to be showing here, um, we had a fierce tranny finally. And uh, them queen, I should say, sorry. <laughs> Excuse me, girls. <laughs> um, utmost respect. Um, that ball was important to me because um, Everybody was there, you know, and the, comp the, the categories were right. Because usually they don't have categories for me, you know. I'm a little too bearded for that film queen, butch queen up in drag competition, or I'm a little too uh, butch sometimes for that whatever. Um, I just, I don't know, I just, I needed to get my scores, you know what I mean? I needed to be accepted properly, and it meant so much to me, you know. I'm, as much as people want to say maybe I'm a sellout or I, you know, I'm with the girl, I'm with the big children. And it's like, children, please. It's like, if they don't, if, they, <laughs> if these kids have seen my toenails and what I've been through, they would gag because, honey, <laughs> it's been hell, you know. And I've loved every minute of it. And um, I think sometimes they, uh, I think sometimes when you he hear people get a little, um, I mean, I, the people that love me, people that hate me, you know, and when you hear the, the negative and, and it used to bother me a lot, you know, or I'm too, you know, I'm not, I'm not, you know, down with the kids, I'm not this, I'm not that, I'm not this, and then the music was, I guess the music really was the one that really helped me more than the ballroom thing, it was just because the, cause they could put, they didn't have to, I don't know, I don't know what exactly how they, how it happens, but it happens where they kind of like accept it, you know, and, you know, my drag has also, I think, helped out the drags that don't want to be like girls, you know what I mean? They want to be like titty queens and, and, and tuck all the time and I'll do all that stuff. I think, I think I've helped to release all that um, manergy, I should call them, out of their bodies and, and to be more, um, you know, uh, Androgynistic boys, or, or being able to just be soft and soft and hard at the same time, you know. Okay. Um, soft. <laughs> you're very supportive to the community. Why do you feel so strong about giving back? What is your motivation? I'm very blessed in the sense of 
my whole career has been the right place at the right time and you know yeah I put stuff out there and I have to tell you that when it goes out there it comes right back at you <laughs> and it can be thrown on the ground or you can get cut from that video or you can get you could get not get that part and in a lot of places I don't a lot of things I have not gotten I mean I remember the first gig I remember the first audition I went to in New York I went to to the audition I just got here from Miami and I'm in this white gown white dress and this big uh, 60s wig and you know, the big Shaw, and this is like eight, like 9.30 in the morning in Chelsea, and what Shaw with the white trim feathers on the, on the instant of the Shaw, and it's like five yards of fabric and white pumps. And I'm in the street with my book, you know, big hair, lashes, beat, 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 little beat Miami beat, though. It was like cartoon. So um, I go to the audition, and I could not believe what I was seeing. They're, all the girls were there, but everyone was in jeans and a tank top pile boots and their, you know, their portfolio. Jean jackets, you know, just. When I walked in, the girls went, whoo! <laughs> they started cackling, I was like. I sat there, I said, girl, you either can stay here and weigh the water <laughs> or walk out and have them cackle on you more. So I sat there and I was sitting right there in front of, I don't think it was girly or Candace or one of those girls. And, they just, <laughs> those girls looked at me like, you got to work, girl, you look she's like, oh, girl, oh, she's good, girl. <laughs> and it's, it was so funny. It was crazy. I think giving back to the community is um, very, very important because, um, uh, you know, um, I was very fortunate to be brought up by some really fierce queens in Richmond, Virginia and DC and they're not here right now and um, these kids, these people, these, 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 these most beautiful like creatures that are like, they came into my life that I used to dress drag queens in Richmond where I'm from and um, I used to sneak out of my parents house and everything and they used to tell me so much, and I'll be like, oh, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Like, why are you telling me so much? And then during that time, one by one, they were disappearing, and I didn't really understand what was going on. And I remember really young, I'm like 15, 16 years old. And, and um, I just, I come from a family where, you know, a big family where, you know, you kind of just help and you did things, you know, and people actually do something to do it, you know? and. Uh, I remember losing some of my friends in the beginning of my life, and um, I just, you know, once it's done, it's done, you know, it's not, there's no going back, you know, there's no, there's no, I wish I could have, or there's no, why didn't I do, or it's just, it just happens, and, um, and with death and everything, you treat it as a home going, because people will need to, you need to go on with your own life, and you need to do things for it, but, you know, if you could do something on this earth now to, for anybody, you know, it's good to be at those benefits, it's good to be, you know, at a function, it's good to go and help out a sister, you know, go pick up her meds, or it's good to, whatever you can do for someone, you do it, and I think the gay community needs to go out and do more for each other instead of doing so much for themselves and their bodies and their looks and their, and their, and their, and their outfits and da da da. Granted, I'm a queen too and I live, I live, I live, but you know, I just, life is too short, man. You gotta like, you learn, you get so much out of that. When you, when you help someone out or when you give something back, you cannot ask for anything more of what it's going to help with, with the whole function or what it's gonna do for that person. Or, Cause you do get it back, you, one way or another, it does come come back to you through one way or another, through a message, through, through uh, you know, I've had money fall out the sky for me, honey. Like, literally, I like, Lord, what am I going to do, Lord, 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 Lord. And you know, that's what you call on him, right? And so I'm just like doing it all wrong from the get-go. But then, you know, by the, I don't know how it happens, but it happens. And, you know, I can't mess with the, I can't mess with them with the, with the madness, you know. You just got to do what you got to do. And, and we as, we as gay, bisexual, transgender, whatever. We have to do, each, do for each other, you know, and we have to help each other out because, you know, it's all cute and stuff to be gay. It's cute right now to be gay. It's really cute, like really cute, but, you know, we still have to be there for each other, you know? How did HIV and the whole AIDS crisis affect you? 
How did it affect me? Yeah, as far as friends and um, you know, it depends on how it affects you. It um it affects me a lot. I mean, they such a wow. <sighs> I don't know a person it doesn't affect. I mean, I don't know of a person that doesn't, doesn't deal with this every day. I just don't know. And if you don't deal with it every day, if you don't deal with HIV and AIDS and all that stuff, then you're living in a world where it's an illusion. You know, I, I, I when growing up, I saw, you know, I, my best friend, you know, my best friend in DC. And, and you know, I, I doing the AZT and stuff, he was taking it and, you know, he's young. He's like, he was, I was like 24, 20, 24 at the time, he was like just turning 20. He was on AZT and, you know, we going on trips and stuff and going to clubs and stuff. And every four hours, we're like, go, go take a pill, go take a pill, go take a pill. So, you know, always been, it's always been in my life, you know what I mean? I, the older you get, the more, I guess, the more comfortable and the more knowledge, you know. I mean, I'm very well, I'm very well educated about it too. So it, I think it's really good to educate yourself about what you don't know, you know what I mean? And so you can understand what's going on, you know? What advice can you give to a talented child in the ball scene? To a talented child in the ballroom. I think the best thing you could do is to continue what you're doing. To try to do something different every time because you're allowed to do that. Um, so you should go as far as you can go. You should also start branching out in, in little realms, in little places, take, have, have support of your house, you know what I mean? Um, uh, you can make a life out of it, whatever you do, whether it's making clothes or directing or producing or, or performing or making records or being a DJ or an announcer. You can have a bigger, bigger life than what it is at the ballroom. Some kids are very happy there. And I'm very, I respect that because some people are really content. Me, on the other hand, I'm not content. <laughs> I have to put my fingers in a lot of places because um, I, I, I'm an adventurer. You know, I like to, I like adventure. I like, I like being told I can't do something. You know, that's what I think that's one main reason I do what I do because I remember being told very young, being told at the, at the clubs I grew up in, you know, Rich with that, oh girl, you know, you're a little too hard for that. You can't be doing any of that, girl. Oh. <laughs> No, girl, we're not going to put you in drag, honey. You dress up. And we're going to go back over here, girl. No, 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 Miss Thing. No, 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 no. And you know, when I go home now, it's like, ha ha! <laughs> so, um, you know, but I just think uh, anybody that has talent in the ballroom, they, you, can, you can do it, you know? I think you just knowing how to talk to people and learning how to um, communicate and do your business and try to be as professional as possible. Be as professional as you can, you know? Um, and you will learn that with time, you know? There is a certain bit of protocol that you have to act a certain way with certain people and you learn that with time. You can't learn that right away. Unless you go to, go to some like, you know, some prep school and, you know, go to some Mrs. Charms, you know? professional ballroom child class or something like that. And you know what? I have a lot of respect for kids that, um, you know, I, I love the Queen's English. I live for all that drama and the kiki and the carry-ons and things. And, and when I go to my interviews and things, I talk this way. This is the way I talk. And, and you know, a lot of times they, uh, <laughs> they get a little confused and I have to have an interpreter there. And, um, you know, um, but, uh, you know, if you really respect yourself, you love yourself, and you love what you do, people will learn how to cope with you. They will learn how to, how to, um, to, to work with you because, you know, they need that. They need, and all these corporations and all these businesses, these fashion houses, they need the drama. They need all that stuff, you know. There, there comes a time when, you know, and I used to see all the designers at, the, at my shows or, or at other drag queen shows, and I used to see them, like, look at the girls, the, the way the girls would make their outfits or whatever. And, you know, 
freaks can make a difference in this world. And, and, and I know ballroom children have made a difference. They have made a major difference in this world, you know. So they need, they need to know that, you know. They need to know that, you know. The first thing I say, you want to learn anything about the, the about the, about, you want to learn, when I tell young gay kids now, I'm like, you want to learn something about being gay? Three movies you must watch, okay? Three movies you watch, especially if they're ethnic, okay? Black children especially, okay? But, you know, I just say to, to, to the gay kids, you know, I say, you know, you must watch Paris is Burning first. That's the, that's the first, okay? You must watch, you must watch, I don't know, you must watch Mahogany, <laughs> which is like, honey, I'm not going to, that, 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 that'll explain all of it. And, um, what was the other one? Oh, and I know, Heathers, for some reason, I like Heathers. So, um, you know, I... Paris is burning, and it's just, well, and then once they see that, they go, oh, okay, now, and then it all starts, you know, they wanted to go to the, see a ball, they want to, they want to do a runway, they want to see a runway show, they want to see your performance, they want to meet those people, they, you know, it's crazy, you know, and once they, you know, I don't know, I just think that, Well, you know, it's so funny right now because everything is going through my head right now and I'm getting all this energy surged to me right now to talk about so much and I don't know where it's coming from, but it's really, really amazing to, to be right now, to be in this position and kind of talking about this stuff because I don't really consider myself a, a, a really a, someone who's really, I really don't, I'm just very lucky to be in this position right now, so I just, it's really hard. It's really great. It feels great. Who discovered you? And who are some of the people you work with? Work with? The person who discovered me is my Juan, my mother, the House of Aviance, Juan Aviance, Juan Williams, Miss Juan Aviance. <laughs> <laughs> we used to, uh, I used to go to DC, it was in DC, going to a club called Tracks, and Sunday night was the um, black night, black gay night, and uh, um, I used to go and watch all the girls who run away, and, and Juan came up to me and said, Miss Tang, come here. Then she went back, she was like this looking back at me. He goes, you know you're cute. You're really cute. You need some help, but you're cute. And um, we need to talk. She walked away from me. Next Sunday, she said, Miss Ding, what's going on, girl? She said, come on, come over here and dance with us. I said, okay. I'm going to dance with them for a little bit. And uh, I was a little nervous, you know, really nervous. But then uh, I went to go hang out with them a couple of times, and then they asked me to be in the house. And uh, it was just crazy because um, I was like, wow, I've changed my name. Like, what's that supposed to mean? You know, oh, and we were called the House of Power before. Power was our first name. And uh, <laughs> then I moved in with Juan. They had like a three bedroom apartment. And uh, so I had one of the bedrooms. And uh, Juan had a dream or something like that. I think he had a dream about the name. And, and it became the House of Aviance. I was like, Aviance? What does Aviance? What does Aviance mean? And she goes, honey, do you remember? <laughs> I can bring on the bacon, I should leave fry it up in a pan, Ash, and never, never, never let you forget your romance, cause I'm a woman, Ashley. It's gonna be an Aviance night. Well, she called up the company, and uh, it was like a, a fake word that they had they, they found or whatever, and so we just adapted the names to our house. I feel so old right now. Is there such a thing oh. as a Kevin Avian's trademark? Is there a Kevin Avian's trademark? Yes. There is a Kevin Avian's trademark. And that's my head, honey. You know, there's glues on it right now, but whatever. I mean, come on. Everybody knows my bald head. I mean, it's what made, it's what, it's what saved my life, actually. Cesar Galindo was, uh, 
I can't believe I just took my wig off in front of you. <laughs> I'm not going to give a new look, you know, something fresh, you know, da, 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 da. But uh, the fact of the matter is, this is my trademark, my bald head, you know. I get a little tired of it. I get a little tired because, because I just get so, like, ugh, I just want to put hair on my head because I'm a hair. I just like hair. I love hair, and I do hair. So um, I just, uh, yeah, this is my bald head. Huh? Just the word period is you. Yeah, that's true. I mean, whenever I hear it, I would think of you, so. <laughs> what is important to you now? I used to want to be, and no, no, I still want to be, I should say. You know, I'm, 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 I, I'm the gay rock star, basically. I am the one. I have a... Girl, I, I, I have a rock star life. I mean, I really, like, carry on. And so, um, you know, I go to have concerts. I perform all over the world. I, I do it, you know what I mean? And what I've learned out of all this, there's money, the money comes and the money goes, and you have the ups and downs. You have the number one hits. You have the dead time. You have the um, artist depression. You have the, all the fears closed. And sometimes you just have what you have. You have. I mean, you just have whatever you can get, you know? And... One thing I've learned is that if you aren't happy, none of this stuff, none of it, none of it, none of it, none of it matters. And it's so true. You know, when I finally learned that, it became easier. Like, just, it just came easy. Work. I didn't put it was so hard on myself anymore. I wasn't so... I just took each show and I, I, I and each song and just started to really love what I was doing instead of instead of just really taking the advantage and just going oh this is gonna be fierce this is gonna be oh this is gonna be you know uh, incredible and a lot of people like and some of my friends said you know they said I remember ladies ladies yo um, I remember when um, when uh, I was. You get a big head in this, career, in this career, okay? Your head gets like this tiny, okay? So I'm bald, my head's like this big, girl. Like huge, you know? Coming through the doors, I'm like, oh, work, girl, out, boom, work, over, put it my way, girl. And a lot of people say that I, like, you know, they don't see, they, they don't see uh, um, the same Kevin. You know, Kevin used to be hard, he used to be this, he used to be that. But, you know, when you grow up and you get older, you, a lot of times, all that stuff was just a front, you know what I mean? It was just like, a, you're, you're so scared. So you, I, for me, for me I, was, I was really scared and nervous. So I worked through it and just, ah! You know, now it's just it's different now, you know what I mean? I'm really, really happy. I'm so incredibly, so grateful for all the people that have helped me. And, and, and everything I do right now, I'm just, I'm really, like, loving everything I'm doing and really, like, Put all that energy into that show for that moment and that time and what's happening. That's where I direct. Really. I don't worry about the next show. Two weeks, two weeks, two, two or three weeks from now, you know, I have people that work for me that do that stuff for me. So I let them do that, you know, until it's time for me to get involved. And then I go and create the outfit or or create the look or get this to get this the sound together, the music together for that one show. And it's so much easier for me now, you know. It's really great. You have a very visual performer. How much time do you spend on that? Creating looks? Every single moment of the day. <laughs> I'm always doing something towards the look and the ambiance project. Uh, I'm always working towards, you know, the next or trying to, you know, walk in these pair of heels or um, trying new makeup or trying to do a different color lip or, you know. It's, it's a process, it's a, it's a growing process with me too. I wish, I wish to God I had videotaped every day of my life though. I'd be a really rich queen right now. It'd be a fierce movie. <laughs> fierce. Um, I noticed a spirit when you, I was sitting there watching you putting on the makeup mm -hmm. and I somehow felt like at some point you, you turned into the performer at Kevin Hummel. Right. Is that how it is? Um, when all the ingredients are there, and she is, like, I'm like, I'm half here now, like, it's half here, like, she, she, I mean, I could turn it on, but, 
uh, it is a certain bit. I think it happens when, I don't know, when the lip gloss goes on or, I know it happens at a certain point and I never really noticed it before because they, somebody watched me, some of the kids watched me do it and they said, there it is, right there. And I'm like, what? They're like, what do we? They said, that's when it comes on. And I just don't, I don't know exactly when it happens, but it does happen right before the show and, and um, when everything is on and everything is there and then it, it, it evolves too. So it's kind of like a, like a, it's like from that point on, it, it, it <laughs> is existing and it's, and it's, and it's, it's really growing and manifesting inside of my body and really taking on its, you know, and she has a certain walk, he has a certain talk. And I talk about she and he, because that's what it is. It is she, he. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's definitely split in half, you know what I mean? But I don't know what part is what, but it's, was he or she, but um, it's definitely a, and then when I, and when I take the lashes off, that's when she's pretty much gone back to bed or something like that, you know, she slept, sleeping. Exactly, clearly see that. They were like, really, oh wow, look at this transformation. What does it happen, you see? What? When does it happen? <coughs> <coughs> What are the what? The assets. The, what, um, the, the valuable things. What, you know, oh, okay. Yeah. It keeps the kids off the streets. I mean, it keeps the kids, you know, focused, you know. I mean, when you are gay, you are definitely older than your regular straight person that's your age. You are definitely put out into the world a lot earlier because you know, face it, we can get, you know, to be young and lovely is a very, like, prized and beautiful thing. I mean, I mean we all love young, lovely things around us. <laughs> so, um, you know, and to see those young kids or, or to be one of those young kids at that time, be, I, don't, I don't really know of a gay person that didn't have a young, beautiful life because, you know, have you noticed how some young straight kids are not as, fierce as a young gay kid. I mean, young gay kids are like, come on. They're ready to take on the world. I mean, they are just like, if you see when the Hatchie Martin, see those girls in front, and they're like, <laughs> I'm sitting there watching them like, wow. Look at the energy that's coming out of this one's body and the way they're talking, this thing girl, what's going on, honey? And I mean, it's like, come on. If I was like that at that age, girl, Britney would be right now on me, but you know, I'll leave her alone. So I figured that the next, the next little Kevin Avian is coming up. I'm sure it's gonna come out on one of those people. Uh, she's going to be a, a doozer, honey. She's gonna be, the, the, yeah, kids are really, you know, more power to them, honey. Go on, press on, do it. When you judge a ball, I know you've been judging balls, what are you looking for? Openness, head to toe, whatever the category says, the category, you must give what the category says. I mean, that's what, I, I don't care who you are, what you are, how little you are, how was it, if you have something off, then you're not gonna get, you're not gonna get your, your tens, you're not gonna be, I really don't like judging balls, because I know what it's like to be judged, I hate being judged. I don't like judging balls, I do not, because I, I just thought, I just, I remember when I got chopped. I will never forget that moment, honey. It has scarred me for the rest of my life. It has scarred me. And to think that I could do that to somebody else, I mean, it's fun, I guess, to do it. But, um, but it does, it, I don't know. It really did something to me. I never walked the ball since then. I swear to God, it was like 10 years until I walked another ball after that. What makes the ball hot? Them queens. <laughs> Period. Point blank. They're the diamonds. Them queens are the, please, 
That's, a, uh, that's art, honey. That is like living body sculpture to the 9,000th power. That is like to be a femme queen and to come off, to come off unclockable, that is over. That is the, the complete over there. You can have a bunch of boys, you can, have, you can do whatever you want, you can have the fierce mother, blah, 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 blah. you give me the house, I don't care. Bring me a femme queen that I can't clock, girl, I gag, I gag. I really and truly gag. I gag, because I really gag. You don't have no idea, I gag. I gag really hard. <laughs> <laughs> do you have a favorite? Huh? Do you have a favorite? I have favorites, and I'm going to keep it cute, OK? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, how do you stay in such physical shape? Um, dancing, digga dancing, dancing, digga dance. I don't know, girl. It's just the way it is. It's, it's just, I metamorphosize to what's going on for the time, you know. That I, I don't know. I just, it just happens. I think it's gen genetic, you know. Sometimes I'm going through this stage, or sometimes I'm going through this stage, or I'm going through this stage. It's just the way it is, you know what I mean? Thank you, though. <laughs> um, I'm, is there anything you would like to add? Luna, do you have any? Because I went through my questions. Okay. So cool. Very good. Is there a Kevin Aviance trademark? Yes. There is a Kevin Aviance trademark. And that's my head, honey. Your head gets like this, honey, okay? So I'm bald, my head's like this big, girl. Like huge, you know? Coming through the doors, I'm like, I work, girl, out. Boom, work, over. Put it my way, girl. I'm the gay rock star, basically. I am the one. I have a, girl, I have, I, I have a rock star life. I mean, I really like, carry on. And so, um, you know, I go to have concerts, I perform all over the world, I, I do it. Put all that energy into that show. For that moment and that time and what's happening, that's where I direct with you. I don't worry about the next show, two weeks, two weeks, two, two or three weeks from now. You have people that work for me and they do that stuff for me, so I let them do that, you know. Until it's time for me to get involved and then I go and create the outfit or, or create the logo, get, this, to get this, the sound together, the music together for that one show. And it's so much easier for me now. At some point, turned into the performer Kevin Tommy. Right. Is that how it is? Um, when all the ingredients are there, and she is, like, I'm like, I'm half here now, like, it's half here, like, she, she I mean, I could turn it on, but, um, it is a certain bit, I think it happens when, I don't know, when the lip gloss goes on, or, I know it happens at a certain point, and I never really noticed it before because they, somebody watched me, some of the kids watched me do it, and they said, there it is, right there. And I'm like, what? They're like, what do we? They said, that's when it comes on. And I just don't, I don't know exactly when it happens, but it does happen right before the show and, and um, when everything is on and everything is there. And then it, it, it evolves too. So it's kind of like a, like a, it's like from that point on, it, it, it <laughs> is existing and it's and, and it's and it's it's really growing and manifesting inside of my body and really taking on its you know and she has a certain walk he has a certain talk and, and I talk about she and he because that's what it is it, it is she he it's a, it's, a, it's a it's it's definitely split in half you know what I mean but I don't know what part is what but it's, was he or she but um, it's definitely a and then when I and when I take the lashes off. That's when she's pretty much gone back to bed or something like that, you know, she slept, sleeping. A lot of times all that stuff was just a front, you know what I mean? It was just like, a, you're, you're so scared. So you, I, for me, for me, I was, I was really scared and nervous. So I worked through it and just, ah! You know, now it's just, it's different now, you know what I mean? I'm really, really happy. I'm so incredibly, so grateful for all the people that have helped me. The money comes and the money goes and you have the ups and downs, you have the number one hits, you have the dead time, you have the um, artist depression, you have the, all the fears closed and sometimes you just have what you have, you have, you, mean, you just have whatever you can get. If you aren't happy, none of this stuff 
None of it, none of it, none of it, none of it matters. When I finally learned that, it became easier. Like, just, it just came easy. Like, I didn't feel it was so hard on myself anymore. I wasn't so, I just took each show and, I, 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 and each song and just started to really love what I was doing. My whole career has been the right place at the right time. I love the Queen's English. I live for all that drama and the kiki and the carry-ons and things. And when I go to my interviews and things, I talk this way. This is the way I talk. And all these corporations and all these businesses, these fashion houses, they need the drama. They need all that. Yeah, I put stuff out there. And I have to tell you that when it goes out there, it comes right back at you. <laughs> I have to put my fingers in a lot of places because um, I, I, I'm an adventurer. I went to the, to the audition. Just got here from Miami, and I'm in this white gown, white dress, and this big uh, 60s wig, and you know, and the big shawl. And this is like eight, like 9:30 in the morning in Chelsea, and what shawl with the white trim feathers on the on the inside of the shawl, and it's like five yards of fabric and white pumps. And I'm in the street with my book, you know, big hair, lashes, beat, 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 little beat Miami beat though. It was like cartoon. So um, I go to audition, and I could not believe what I was seeing. They're, all the girls were there, but everyone was in jeans, and a tank top, pile boots, and their, you know, their portfolio. Jean jackets, you know, just. When I walked in, the girls went, whoo! <laughs> they started cackling, I was like. I sat there, I said, girl, you either can stay here and weigh the water, <laughs> or walk out and have them cackle on you more. So I sat there, and I was sitting right there in front of, I don't think it was Girlie or Candace or one of those girls, and they just, <laughs> those girls looked at me like, you got a lot, girl, you know, she's like, oh, girl, oh, she's good, girl. <laughs> As much as people want to say maybe I'm a sellout or I, you know, I'm with the girl, I'm with the big children, it's like, children, please. It's like, if they don't, if, they, <laughs> if these kids would see my toenails and what I've been through, they would gag. Have you noticed how some young straight kids are not as fierce as a young gay kid? I mean, young gay kids are like, come on. They're ready to take on the world. I mean, they are just like, you see when the Hatchick Martin, see those girls up front? And they're like, <laughs> and I'm sitting there watching them like, wow. Look at the energy that's coming out of this one's body and the way they're talking. This thing girl is going on, honey. And I mean, it's like, come on. If I was like that at that age, Cundy was such a record that it was like, you know, I just saw the kids doing runway. They had boom boxes and they were doing runway up and down. And I remember when the drag queen used to perform down there. She had, she was doing concerts. She was performing my record. I couldn't, I couldn't believe it. You know, you have to understand something. Say, I am really engulfed inside the popular gay community. And to be with the, uh, with my brothers and sisters and seeing them, you know, that that was my that was my tens. You know what I mean? That's my rewards. You know, that's that's everything to me because. You know, when it, all, when it all said and done, I am a black queen, period, point blank, you know, and I come from a very southern black world, you know, and um, when, uh, when you see other kids, especially the black kids, um, you see yourself, you know, and, and I see myself and all those kids, you know, the way they're walking, the way they're like, and, and, the, and the cocoa butter and all the, 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 the sneakers and, and, the, and the, 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 the haircuts and everything. I think it's, it's amazing. It's so beautiful to me. I came out of my mother when I was, I don't understand, <laughs> June 22nd, 1968. I came from a big family, uh, Richard, Virginia, eight kids. And um, my mom and dad basically came to see my show for the first time about three or four years ago. And, uh, my mom just sat there and was like, she was like, what do you think, mom? She's like, dude, what are you doing different? And I said, what do you mean? You've been doing that since you were a kid. I said, okay, okay, fine. My dad, on the other hand, was a little rough on me. Um, he didn't understand what was going on too much, but he's fine now. So, you know, you can fight your parents all you want to, and you can not listen to them, and you might not agree with what they say sometimes, but... I will tell you one thing. I had to finally call my mom and dad up 
and say, I'm sorry. And I said, I'm sorry for not listening. I'm sorry for not, for not, um, for not uh, really listening to what you had to say to me because you were right. It was hard. It was very hard and it still is hard. And, and um, I took a really different path than what they wanted me to and I'm not regretting any of it. But um, I think if I had like, um, include the men a little bit more, my mom and dad, but especially my mom, she is the, you know, I really didn't realize how much this woman meant to me. I almost lost her last year, and um, she's doing fine now. She's cured from cancer. I was in D.C. going to a club called Trax, and Sunday night was the um, black night, black gay night. I used to go and watch all the girls who run away, and, and Juan came up to me and said, Miss Dang, come here. And she went back, she was like this, looking back at me. She goes, you know you're cute. You're really cute. You need some help, but you're cute. And um, we need to talk. And she walked away from me. Next Sunday, she said, Miss what's going on, girl? She said, come on, come over here and dance with us. I said, okay. We danced dance with them for a little bit. And uh, I was a little nervous, you know, really nervous, but then uh, I went to go hang out with him a couple times, and then he asked me to be in the house. Juan had a dream or something like that. I think he had a dream about the name, and, and he became the house of Aviance. I was like, Aviance? What does Aviance? What does Aviance mean? And she goes, honey, do you remember? <laughs> I can bring on the bacon, I should leave fry it up in a pan. And never, never, never let you forget your romance Cause I'm a woman, Ashley It's gonna be an aviance night I was very fortunate to be brought up by some really fierce queens in Richmond, Virginia and D.C. And they're not here right now And um, these kids, these people, these, 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 these most beautiful, like, creatures that are like, they came into my life. That I used to dress drag queens in Richmond, where I'm from, and um, I used to sneak out of my parents' house and everything. And they used to tell me so much, and I'd be like, oh, shut up, shut up, shut up, shut up. Like, why are you telling me so much? And then during that time, one by one, they were disappearing, and I didn't really understand what was going on. And I'm really young, I'm like 15, 16 years old. And if you don't deal with it every day, if you don't deal with HIV and AIDS and all that stuff, then you're living in a world where it's an illusion. My best friend in D.C., he was like just turning 20. He was on AZT and, you know, we going on trips and stuff and going to clubs and stuff. And every four hours, we're like, go, go take your bill, go take your bill, go take your bill. So, you know, always been, it's always been in my life. It's good to be, you know, at a function. It's good to go and help out a sister, you know, go pick up her meds or it's good to whatever you can do for someone you do it and I think the gay community needs to go out and do more for each other instead of doing so much for themselves and their bodies and their looks and their and their and their, and their outfits and da, da, da. granted I'm a queen too and I live I live I live but you know I just life is too short man you gotta like you learn you get so much out of that when you when you help someone out or when you give something back you cannot ask for anything more of what it's going to help with, with the whole function or what it's going to do for that person. Because you do get it back. You, one way or another, it does come, come back to you. I think the best thing you could do is to continue what you're doing, to try to do something different every time because you're allowed to do that. Um, so you should go as far as you can go. I wish to God I had videotaped every day of my life, though. So I'd be a really rich queen right now. <laughs> It'd be a fierce movie. <laughs> Yes.